This is an odd little light I found on eBay. It was sold as a jellyfish light, and the reason they call it a jellyfish light is because when you take it out of the packaging and it springs out, it goes into this sort of jellyfish type shape. And these are designed to be hung from your ceiling in a large multiple, and they run from a common 12 volt supply, which isn't supplied, you supply that yourself. Now, let me change the lighting so you can actually see once I power this up what it looks like. One moment, please. So here it is running. You're going to have to imagine it hanging from the ceiling uh, and just morphing through its colours. It looks quite attractive in a way. It's quite unusual. It looks visually quite pleasing. Uh, and it does the usual thing, like of those colour-changing LEDs, of going red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, white, and just repeating that on a continuous basis. But it's very three-dimensional and spatial, and I suppose it's kind of cheap for them to make. But anyway, watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. And the light is back, so let's take this completely apart and explore it. So the metal collet here, oh, incidentally, the current is typically about 13 milliamps, so it's not running as brightly as it could, particularly with an RGB LED, which is coincidentally, he said, unscrewing the front of this, because it does have a little, the fiber optics are into a little uh, threaded insert. I suppose it's based on an LED spotlight. But here is the fiber optic cluster in its little insert here. And that threads into here. And inside, if I can zoom down this, I'll turn the power off to it. It's going to be more visible. Inside is a large LED, colour-changing LED, and lots of hot melt glue. OK, this is going to make things tricky. I'll guess there's a resistor in here as well. I'm going to try and get the hot melt glue out. That's not going to be fun. I'll drip some isopropanol in. This is not going to be straightforward. I'm going to have to pause while I do this, aren't I? Let's squirt some isopropanol in. Uh, and just stir it up with a screwdriver in there. Try and get the the glue to move. Oh, this is going to take a while. Right, tell you what, I shall pause while I try to get this out. One moment, please. Okay, the hot melt glue is out, and I'm not actually seeing a resistor. It might be one of these LEDs with the so that's designed to operate directly at 12 volts with a built-in resistor. Uh, interesting, but let's experiment. Let's stick another LED into the end of this, and uh, see if we can get uh, a more pleasing effect, perhaps white, or maybe even a fairly high power LED. I'll try that now. One moment, please. So I've decided to go a different direction with this. Let me zoom in and show you what I'm doing here. So I've drilled the back of this out to 6.5 millimetres. That's roughly just over a quarter of an inch. And it's enough with a bit of remembering that this little standard connector here can friction fit into it. And that means that now I can just plug an LED of my choice in there. And it means you can change the LED in it should the LED degrade as they sometimes do. So I'm going to run this off 5 volts, and for that I'm going to put a 120 ohm resistor in, which should I estimate come the region of 15 milliamps or so, with a standard 5 volt supply and a typical gallium nitride LED. A bit more current for gallium arsenide or gallium phosphide, but they'd need the more current anyway just for that extra brightness. So let's bring in the solder, if I can find the solder. This looks like solder. And I shall tin this lead that I've already started processing. And I shall put just a little touch of solder in this. It does appear to be copper. That's nice. I think it's copper. It's very hard to tell. I mean, I could do the, the usual tests. Heat test, basically. So let me just uh, put this up here. And this is very small and fumbly. Or maybe I'm just getting old. And the eyesight's not what it used to be. That's very annoying. It's the single biggest annoyance of age is your eyesight degrading. So I'm going to flow those together now. No, that didn't go too well. That went terribly. But now the solder has chilled. And uh, it's okay. It's fine. Everything is so small now. I used to just be able to read surface mount components, but it's not easy these days. That that just frustrates me so much. So now this, uh, we're going to attach the other wire onto one end of this, but we're also going to stagger and uh, attach the other wire onto the black. So I'm sort of strip that with the inverted snips like that. 
And then I'm just going to put one piece of sleeving over the whole lot. So more or less like they did. Uh, if you look at their arrangement, they did just tack straight onto LED. So it must have a resistor. And if you look in the end of it, I don't know if you're going to see this. Let's try this. It's all. It's going to be a disaster, isn't it? So I'll focus up to here. And then I'll go like that. And then like that. And can you see the little chip at the side here? That's the RGB control chip. But if you turn on its side, you might see it's quite thick. It looks as though the chip itself is mounted on top of a resistor. That's an interesting approach. OK, back down to the bench we go. And we'll zoom back out again because this is way too close. Way too close. Way too far away now. Right, OK, where was I? So now I want to crop these leads. This is where black heat shrink would have been great, but I do not have black heat shrink in the sizes I require. So I'm going to cut one of these leads, a black one, at that length, and the red one at this length. And strip them. I shall use the stripper for this, because I have cut it very short making my life much harder in the process. Oh, these wires, on the other hand, have very little copper in them. They're very, very uh, ungenerous. OK, that's how it is. Almost to the point it's quite hard to actually uh, twist them, because there's not much there to twist. I wish they wouldn't skimp on wire like this. Thick insulation with very thin cores. It's not a great direction to go. It's been caused by greed speculating on the value of important metals like copper. That's what happens when you let money people make decisions. Hmm. That was a little political statement. I don't do many political statements. But I do feel that the finance industry has caused so much damage to the technical industry. Very frustrating, yes. So now... I'm going to solder this wire on here. Big, huge tail hanging off the back of that, not to worry. And then I'm going to solder this wire onto here. And they are staggered deliberately. A little bit of extra sleeving would have been better, but that's for the professional version. So let's uh, get that wire out of the way and flow these together. Did that flow? I think it did flow. This is good. OK, let's cut off that huge tag that's sticking out the back. That's because I didn't apply fresh flux while the soda was being melted. But that's fine. OK, OK. Now I'll cut a bit of sleeving to cover that. Something that's going to go over the full distance and a wee bit over the top. This is where the black sleeving would have made it look so much more dignified. But now you can see all the electronics. And I'll shove this over this end and thread it all the way down. I could have tested that to see it's actually working, but I think it will be working. There's not really much to a resistor. Here is the hot air pen. People ask me what soldering station I use. I still use my Yahua. 8786D, which has the hot air pen and the soldier iron, but to be honest, it's a bit dated now. These days, all the young kids are going for the, is it the T12 bits? It's the integrated bits with the, that are just are a better idea altogether, to be honest. I really should make the transition. Right, tell you what, this first LED, I'm going to mark which side of the socket is the positive by putting a bit of red on. And if I was really being posh, I could also uh, mark the other side as black. Well, I'm going to have to now because I just skidded all over it with the black pen. With the red pen, should I say. Let's get the black and see if I cannot skid all over it with the black. That's better. Doesn't that look so professional now? So now I'm going to stuff that into the... Well, I'm going to put an LED in and stuff it in because that saves a little bit of effort. Why am I going to shove this all the way up? Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter if it goes in too far. Lovely. It sticks out the end a little bit. And I shove it in and I get the fiber optics. And then I turn fate by uh, 
putting on the fiber optics here and then trying it out without doing what most professional YouTubers would do and a jump cut to make it look as though it worked first time. They're cheats. Okay, so now I'll connect this to a 5 volt supply. Let's zoom back out because this is enormous. It's enormous. So here is the red going on, here is the black going on, and it is lit. Uh, and the current is 17 milliamps, which is absolutely fine. So let's uh, switch the lighting off again and adjust the exposure. Take the exposure off. That looks pretty good. This is ice blue, by the way. I should actually lock the exposure. Uh, ice blue. Yeah, that's quite a nice color. Uh, let me try another color. Let me try green. One moment, please. Okay. Fairly easy to get the LEDs out with long nose pliers, but I may have to push this socket out the back if it's a friction fit. And it is a good friction fit. Push it out the back, get the new LED, which is the new LED. I'll stuff this one and see what color it is. Is this green or ice blue? That's actually warm white. That could be quite nice. Okay, tell you what, I shall stuff that in uh, and stick the fiber optics. In fact, I just need to, I don't even need to take fiber optics off to change them if it's just lying the socket. I think if you were dangling this above people's heads in a restaurant, it would be good to glue it on just in case it fell off. And it's not like to injure MD, but they might nick it. So uh, yeah, the warm white's nice. It's pretty good. Uh, right, okay, let's try... Uh, pulling this socket out, I will unscrew the fibre optic. I could just prise it out with a pair of side cutters, couldn't I? I've used them as a little crowbar type device. Pull it out, it doesn't matter if the LED gets shorted on the metal in the process like it did there. It just doesn't matter because the resistor will limit the current. Uh, so what colour is this LED? Was that the cold white? The ice blue it was. Let's try green. Fumble, fumble. Yeah, I'm doing this in the dark. It's not the best way to do it. There it goes. There is the green. Shove it up the end. And the green should be one of the brighter colours. It is one of the brighter colours. There we go, green jellyfish. So any colour of jellyfish you like. Okay, right here. Watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So there we have it. It's the Jellyfish Light from eBay. I should, I should probably link to it. Probably available on AliExpress as well. And uh, it's a simple enough modification. You can use it as it is if you want the colour changing ones running off 12 volts. Or you can make this little modification with the 120 ohm resistor and a 5 volt USB power supply with a sort of splitter arrangement. And then you can run lots and lots of these with your own custom choice of LEDs in them. Even the colour changing LEDs again. But there we have it. Uh, that is it. It's an interesting thing. Another thing worth mentioning about this before I finish here is that the fiber optics, are they just, what happens if you, they kind of rotate in this, I think. What would happen if I pushed it out? Would they just go everywhere? They probably would, wouldn't they? I think they are glued. Yeah, I don't think that's going to end well if I pull that out. That means I'm going to do it, obviously, because, you know, one must. So I'll just grip the big bunch of fibres like this and twist this. Is it going to come off? I don't think it is going to come off. I think that is pretty much glued in solidly. What if I added a bit of isopropyl alcohol? Is this even a good idea? No, no it's not. But I'm doing it anyway. Well that is glued quite tightly. I do get the feeling that uh, if I continue like this, as I am, uh, then all the fibres are just going to pop right out. They are moving a little bit. Are they coming out? Yes. Are they staying together? Yes, they've kind of stayed together. That one didn't stay together. But they've kind of stayed together. So the other options here, you can do whatever you want in there. You could just put a tail of fibre optics into that if you wanted, or indeed anything. Just use it as a little dangling downlight if you wanted, with or without that. Uh, but many uses, yes. Play about to your heart's content. But there we have it, the uh, fibre optic jellyfish. Oh, it has disintegrated. Lovely. Uh, well worth buying just to take apart.